Melanie Tun puts knots in charge. Luke Fletcher took new career best figures, six wickets helping blow Essex away for 99 before knots piled on the runs on day one. Lyndon James and Stephen Mullaney shared a 100-run partnership to take the score to 188 for four. 200 was on the board early in the session. The host's lead was now stretching to three figures. Two runs off Snater took James to his half-century. His knock came from 90 balls and had really given his side a position of strength. But the bowler would have the last laugh. Four balls later, he had the knots all-rounder out for 51. Harmer quick to get down for the catch. And then he had two in two balls. Moores caught behind for a first ball duck, and the young Essex bowler had his maiden fifer in first-class cricket. A moment to savour for Snater. With Mullaney there, Knotts kept streaking away from the champions. The lead headed towards 150, and the all-rounder was closing in on a century. Patterson White had Knotts on 250. Could he stick with Mullaney? He'd be out for the same as his shirt number. 22 runs added before he was out to Harmer, who had Tender Scarter to thank for his agile catch. They couldn't prevent Mullaney reaching 100. His 18th four didn't quite go where he intended, but that didn't matter. His knock had his side now closing in on a lead of 200. And he was still there at lunch. The score 296 for 7, and Broad alongside him was even showing some attacking intent. They brought the 300 up after lunch and were showing their intent. Broad batting in a runner ball and showing the kind of late innings hitting he often displays for England nowadays. His partner would fall to Siddle though. The Aussie got one to skid on and beat the bat. Mullaney bowled for 117. Fletcher wouldn't be able to add batting fireworks to his big bowling performance. He was out LBW to Snater for two. And then he had a seventh wicket to his name. Broad caught in the slips by Cook, out for 41, and Knotts all out for 323, their lead 224. Mullaney's innings had been a real highlight for Knotts, so intelligent play mixed with some ballistic hitting had taken him to 100. And no matter the result, the match will live long in the memory of Snater, who finished with 7 for 98. Essex got themselves off to a great start. The opening partnership of Nick Brown and Alistair Cook vastly improving on their first inning showings to take the score past 50. But they were only in the 60s when Knotts had their first breakthrough, courtesy of Lyndon James. Cook's paths found, out LBW for 35. Wesley followed in quick succession, caught behind for just one off the bowling of Stuart Broad. And all of a sudden, the start was turned on their head. A regroup required at T, the score 76 for two. They tried what they could, but Knotts wouldn't be kept out for long. The score 89 when Patterson produced a great delivery to bowl Lawrence for 11. Brown and Walter looked to find their way to three figures, but they had to be careful and batted patiently. That approach got them to 100 and had Brown in the 40s, and he was looking for back-to-back -back half centuries. He wouldn't be denied. Broad dropped into the leg side for a single, and the opener was leading the resistance for Essex. He'd go on to play his way to 60 and take the total to 129 for three, and the day was brought to a close. But importantly, the deficit was now just 93. Could they keep going on the third day of play?